All right, as it has been a fantastic weekend so far, if you can't tell. You should have got down here. If you chance as well, if you're at home here in Cologne, and if you can understand me, that's a pretty good effort because my accent is ridiculous and I talk very fast. But let's move straight along. We're gonna in, we're gonna check out the third of our semi-final participant teams. Thank you so much. We are indeed going to be going through the bracket and see exactly how this one is shaping up here because, well, we're getting quite far through the tournament now and it's all coming down to the minuscule details and the differences that can be made. As you can see below us, make sure you follow us on Twitter as well and do get in contact with your predictions with the hashtag WOT Pro League as well. We will be seeing two of the more community favorite teams going head to head. Now, normally these guys would be towards the lower half of the tournament. They'd barely have made it through to this point. But today and yesterday, they have turned up incredibly. So let's have a look at their progression through the tournament so far. Hopefully we can throw up a graphic for you so you can see it yourselves because explaining this is hard work and I'm not good with words. Surprising considering my job. But uh, basically it will be Evil Panda Squad up against Chasma Crew. Now, that's going to be a great game. But you can see how you know everything else is shaping up. Virtus Pro did pip Denova to the post but it was a very close match. Now let's go on to the lower part here. Kazan Crew up against Evil Panda Squad. What are we going to expect from this? Yeah, so Kazan Crew qualified through the winner's bracket, uh, not losing a single game. Evil Panda Squad went through the lower bracket, uh, eventually managed to beat De Nova. So they got through that one quite well. But, you know, you've got to remember yesterday, Kazan Crew did beat Evil Panda Squad 3-2. to two. So theoretically, they should be the ones winning this one. Uh, and all, all previous uh, match days in Season 1, Season 2, uh, they've won 3-0 to zero or 3-1. to one. So... Uh, on paper at least, but paper doesn't seem to matter uh, in this tournament at all. True. On paper they should win, but I think, you know, it's whoever's going to turn up today uh, after a grueling yesterday for both teams, um, Evil Panda Squad, again, you know, they have to get their timing right. Ace was talking about it on stage. Timing is crucial. Timing is everything for Evil Panda Squad. And for Kazan Crew, it's those individual performances because um, they have the synergy, they just need that skill. Yeah, it's, it's all about who can turn up best on the day. This is the one brilliant thing about being at an offline event anything can happen. Online, you'd never expect Dino to pick up two maps against First Pro, for example. Never. But here, they managed it. They took it all the way to Mines. But uh, as you've seen the bracket now, you've kind of got an understanding of what's going on today. Let's get some more detail about the game just about coming up for you guys. So let's pass back over to stage with our incredible host, Mitch. Thanks, guys. Um, you're a great team. Not the team I was actually talking about, but we'll get straight on to that now. So let's see a little bit of what Kazan Crew have been up to in the lead-up to this tournament. All right, so on that note, we're going to have a bit of a chat to uh, the Kazan Crew guys now just before they get into this one. So I'd like to call over Still Mojo to the stage. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. for about the 16th time. We've had you up here quite a few times. Now, I spoke to you guys yesterday after you finished. You guys were pretty happy. You are feeling pretty good about the way you played yesterday, and why wouldn't you? What did you guys get up to last night? Was it, you know, were you, were you stressing? Were you preparing, or were you relaxing? We prepared very hard last night at the bars. Yeah, yeah. Um, so is there, are you, do you have specific things in order, specific plans and strategies? Uh, was it because I suppose you weren't really able to play too much last night, were you? We have several tactics for each side for every map, so we're just going to jiggle what we think we, we need to at the moment. That's it. Not to big into it. Well, as you said as well to me yesterday, it's not about preparing for the enemy team, but preparing yourself or preparing for yourself as well. So thank you very much for that. Okay, well, we're going to uh, we're gonna have uh, my good friend Sony over here join us from Evil Panda Squad. We've had, we've had you up here a fair few times as well, haven't we? You, you guys now, yesterday a long game against Denova. A long game, went to five games and, uh, you know, very stressful, very tired. But, you know, when, because you beat them, you now obviously go up against Kasna Crew instead of Virtus Pro. But we saw Virtus Pro drop two maps to Denova. So what are your thoughts? I mean, 
Be honest with me, who would you rather go up against at this point? Are you happy to be against Kazda Crew or would you, would you maybe prefer to be against Virtus Pro? Yeah, we want to play with uh, Kazna because we lost with them uh, two matches in group stage and uh, yesterday, so we really want to play with them and take revenge. So we fight and we play our best game with the Nova. And I'll see you guys were the winners of IEM Katowice. Um, tell me, is it a similar, you know, when you start to get towards the end of a tournament uh, and it's really like the adrenaline and you're getting tired, what, what is it with you guys that gets you over the line? What is it uh, about Evil Panda Squad that allows you guys to outlast everyone else and uh, come out on top? Yeah, we we'd love uh, offline events. We love uh, events like IEM uh, Katowice, like Gamescom. It's... Uh, strongly motivate us to, to work, to, to train and uh, it's, the, it's really important for us to play on uh, these uh, events. Uh, we play probably about uh, two years in uh, World of Tanks in uh, eSport and uh, uh, we play in Cologne uh, last year in uh, Go For World All Stars. So we love this place, we love Cologne and we are really happy that we can be here one more time this year. Well, thank you, Sonny. It's always so nice to have you up here on the stage. Good luck to you guys as well. Evil Panda Squad going up against Kasna Crew now. A very, very important match. The loser drops away and loses their chance, obviously, at the big money. The winner will go up against Virtus Pro in the grand final. That's going to be a best of seven. But right now, I'm going to pass it over to our lovely casters, Pansy and Laughter, to take us into this game. So now he wants to talk to us. <laughs> True, man. See how it is. I was being nice to you, Mr. Host. And you do that. Cruelty at its finest. But as we said, we do have an incredible game coming up. You've just heard from both of the you know, key players there. I think the big thing for me that got pointed out was the fact it is a tale of revenge now for the Evil Panda Squad. They had such a great start, but they couldn't quite topple Kazan Crew, which is quite surprising, really. Yeah, I think they should have kind of be those uh, that team. They they did say they made quite a lot of mistakes, a lot of individual mistakes. They said he he screwed up one of their games, and Sony was saying that they should have won those games, and you know they beat themselves as opposed to Kazan Crew beating them. So I'm hoping this time round maybe they're gonna uh, change a fortune. Uh, probably another 3-2 game in store for us. And uh, the kind of maps, you know, Evil Panda Squad should be winning are those kind of, you know, Himmelsdorf, those uh, Ruinbergs, those Ents. Uh, well, you know, uh, Kazan Crew are definitely better on those Abbeys and Mines. Uh, perhaps the borderline Prokhorovka, but, you know, both teams are so good on open maps. That I think those are going to be all even. It's all about the team who turns up on the day. So I think uh, both teams completely even. This is the closest match we'll probably see. Uh, for the whole of this tournament, the World of Tanks Pro League Season 2 Finals. I'm just really, really looking forward to getting to it because I think we're going to have the most amazing World of Tanks games ever. Yeah, and I just don't know where to put my money on this one. I love Kazan Crew, I love the way they play. But they were hit and miss, and Evil Panda Squad seemed a little bit more consistent yesterday. But you can see on your screens there, I, I, I don't like betting against Kazan Crew. No. I really don't, because throughout the season I've loved their play style, I love the way they executed their plays, and you even know that I'm a big fan of it. But I'm not sure if they're showing what I used to see online here at Gamescom. I just don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a good point, really. I mean, Kazakru, they're such an, a hit and miss team. I mean, okay, you can see Runes on your screen there, and he's helped the team a lot. He's probably the reason why they're doing actually so well. He's the most experienced offline player here by far, um, playing, you know, so many, so many teams, so many good games. Um, but that's the thing about Kaz and the crew, you know, they turned up yesterday, did very well, the best they've ever done in an offline tournament. They've come last in every single offline tournament so far, but here they are in the uh, playoff day fighting for that 50,000 euros in the semi-finals against Evil Panda Squad. But, you know, they could not turn up today. They could be the Kazna crew of old today. They could be the team that just loses absolutely everything under these high-pressure situations. And I just don't think that's what Evil Panda Squad will do. I think they will turn up to at least some extent. Okay, they might get some timing issues. They might get some, uh, you know, player skill issues here and there. But I think they're going to be the more consistent team here. They are the more experienced team at these events. So I think that's going to come into the equation as well. Um, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, exactly that. And... Uh so are you going to back Evil Panda Squad here? I'm going to back Evil Panda Squad, I think. Okay. So people in Twitch chat and all over the place. If you are sitting in the audience and you can hear me, hopefully you can. Otherwise, who the hell am I talking to? Um, do make sure you get your predictions in. Get, you know, tweeting to the uh, hashtag WOT Pro League. 
give that a little tweet with your prediction of the score line because that, I want to kind of see what the audience feel on this one because I don't know anymore. I find it very hard to predict these games in, in its entirety. I haven't seen Kazna Crew today. They've uh, kind of rocked up. I did see Sony walking around earlier by the Twitch lounge, just, you know, chatting away, relaxing, uh, nothing, you know, seemed focused. And they look like they're ready for this one. They, they kind of let it slip earlier. I don't think they're going to do that again. Just getting every single setting right now, making sure everything is fine between them. Because as you said, if it does come down to small things like timing, like communication, not having that completely sorted out could cost you the game. So this is their time to prepare it, talk through the strategies, warm up a bit. That's why it might take a little bit longer this time because that's, that's what they're doing right now. They are getting warming up, they're getting comfortable. Last time these guys were playing for hours and hours on end. They were as warmed up as you can get, if not overplayed by that point, which might have been the downfall of De Novi yesterday. But these guys need to feel comfortable again. They need to get that preparation to an absolute point where they can go, okay, I won't notice my surroundings. That's the biggest thing. When I used to play at events, I was like, the last thing I want to do is be even noticing what I'm using. I want my keyboard, my mouse, absolutely everything to feel so comfortable that I don't notice it. So it's just you and the game, and that's what they need to get to. That's why they're taking their time at the moment and getting their setups perfect, making sure they're going through any last-minute strategies, discussing the maps as well. And what three maps initially do you think we're going to see here? I think we're going to see a, a variety of maps. We just want to see which ones they actually ban out so we can get an idea of exactly where these teams want to go in these uh, potentially five games in this best of five, obviously, if they're five games. So um, Prokhorov go going straight out there. Um, that won't be picked from both teams. Um, so none of that. They definitely don't want to go on a, a map which they probably think that they're even on. They want to be moving that right. straight out of the bag. Ensk as well going down. So a hybrid city map, Russian city map, and the uh, Prokhorov like going down. Ensk, I think Ensk is actually, is it Russian or German? I'm not sure. Someone should let me that. Let me know. Tweet at Laugh to the yeah. Let me know. Let me know uh, what you think Ensk is in terms of its geographical location. And uh, the next, the first, the fifth uh, map pick here will be uh, just waiting for, I think it's Sony picking that one, Evil Panos God on your left. Um, I'm, I'm thinking Mines, um, as it goes up and I read it and I said it was Mines. So Mines is going to be our fifth and final map if we do get to it. Um, I'm predicting Abbey or, or something thereabouts to the next one, map four, as they don't really want to uh, play that complicated map, which they could be quite tired on by that time, the fourth game in. Um, they could be quite tired and make some really critical mistakes that could potentially lose them the game in that 50,000 euros if they do go all the way. So, third map pick here will be Ruenberg. So, Ruenberg will be our fourth map if we do get to it. That hybrid city map once again. So, at the moment, only one hybrid city map coming out from these two teams. Ensk being banned out. Ruenberg being the one we're going for. Um, so, Evil Panos God really hated how they played on Ruenberg last time. I believe that was their fifth and final map, uh, which they actually failed completely on against Evil Panos God. That was Zenith making a mistake there. Steps coming out for the third map. We we'll definitely will be seeing that one, the open map. So that leaves us with potentially Himmelsdorf and Prokhorovka and Abby, obviously, being our second one there. So we'll be seeing Abby as our second. So that's going to be quite an interesting set of matches. And Himmelsdorf, our first one, our classic City map, our German city map, Himmelsdorf will be our first map of today. Evil Panos God versus Kaznagru in the semi-finals. Uh, they will be facing Virtus Pro, whoever wins this one, in the finals, the grand finals of the World of Tanks Pro League Season 2. So now, maps in mind, who do you think this favours here? I think it probably, um, I'm thinking kind of, what, what kind of frustrates me about this is the fact that Kaznagru have been playing Himmelsdorf so amazingly over the far past a uh, couple of days, well at least yesterday, and I've seen them play poten potentially quite good towards the end of the season, but they've never really been the team I've said, okay, they're really good on city maps. Whilst, you know, Evil Panos got always pretty consistent on those kind of maps, so um, I'm going to have to say it's going to be uh, Kazan Cruz map to take here. Uh, you know, they play it so well in the, yesterday, and they played it so well against Speil, although Speil managed to beat them. I think I was at uh, IEM um, Hanover or Katowice, they played it so well against them and they really kind of found their element in that map in many respects. Uh, usually I would go for Evil Panasquad, but just on the, how the dynamic this tournament has been so far, I'm going to go for those guys. See, now I'm finding it hard to make my call because I haven't seen these two playing yet. I really don't know. And then again, Evil Panda Squad at the start of the day yesterday were very strong. They didn't necessarily need that warm-up. Their most important game 
they picked up straight away. They're a team that can just turn up and do that. The other guys on the left of the stage, obviously, you can see them there on your screens, crowd in front, keeping eyes on their favourites, hopefully. If not, maybe chuck a tongue at Sony. If you've got an you know, empty bottle, launch it up there. I didn't say that, he's a lovely guy. See, look, he caught the bottle. Perfect. Wow, that was pretty... That was, is it a glass bottle as well? Imagine if he didn't catch it. Well, Venom's there. He's not a small guy. He'll be fine. True. I'm not encouraging this behaviour. I should probably stop that before I get escorted out of the building. Uh, but anyway, there you go. That is the Kazda crew, guys, on your screens as we speak as well. On the right side of the stage, just getting themselves comfortable and ready to go. Hopefully we get an invite nice and quickly. So, Himmelsdorf is the first map. Indeed. Hmm. So, uh, How do you think that's going to play out? Well, yeah, it's, it's going to go pretty slowly, I believe, at the beginning. I mean, this is really crunch time for these teams. Um, you know, this guarantees them for a second place if they do go through this one. Otherwise, they'll have to be playing for third place. And the difference between the money and, you know, the pride and stuff is, is significant. And obviously, if you do hit that second place spot, then you could potentially be going to the grand, grand finals, um, which will be held somewhere, undisclosed location, secret location, um, you know, later sometime later that's all i'm going to say so what, what where is it what's the date <laughs> i can't tell you secret stuff it's in ollie's basement that's all it is damn straight inviting all the boys to the yard yep come party in the tanks yep a lot of metal stuff down there for sure that's just weird i'm a little bit worried about you sometimes <laughs> you can't you can't tempt me with that stuff and then not expect it how, how is that tempting i've just insulted you like god you tempted me to be weird <laughs> you're just weird normally so Wow, thank you. So you have to sit with him all the time. All the time. It's horrible. I don't know how I cope with this. But uh, I've got to say as well, online, Kazna Crew have always beaten Evil Panther Squad. Um, the last couple of seasons, they've always beaten them. Two in a row. Every time they've did the play day, it's always been them. Kazna Crew, even in the rankings, had a one-up over Evil Panther Squad, finishing fifth, whereas EPS finished sixth. It, uh, Evil Panther Squad only getting 11 to 11 games, so winning 11, losing 11. And then Kazna Crew getting 13 to 9. So... It's, it's one of those games where they're fairly close, but it's always been Kazna Crew's show. So now is the time to turn the tide. We already heard from Sony that they're out for revenge, and hopefully they can get it this time. But if they don't give us an invite to the match, we will not have a game. So hopefully one of the admins can go nudge them and be like, guys, stop making Lauren talk too much. Yeah, it would be very nice if they did that. So just waiting on that invite. You can see New Multi's show, he's always got a smile on his face, that guy. He's got like the friendliest face in the world. So. For someone who's so deadly in game as well, he <laughs> yeah, is quite really scary. cheerful. He's probably a passive aggressive or something. But just because just he, he knows he'll frustrate people, he said they're looking really happy the whole time. I'm liking the random crowd shots. I love it when people notice they're on camera like, Oh god, what's happening? It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Cameramen do that more often. I like it in the World Cup when they just like pick out one person within like the 30,000 million crowd they have in the stadium. Just pick out one and then look up and they just see themselves and I'm like, what the hell? It's always a pretty ladies as well. I, it's, it's someone's job. That's what frustrates me. That's someone someone's job. Someone is paid to yeah. find a pretty woman in an audience. Yeah. What I'm waiting that? for our cameraman to do the same now, just literally go hunting down the rows to find one. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, one guys. It certainly isn't one on camera at the moment, so. It, look, Sony is a beautiful, beautiful oh, lady, all right? Don't you be mean. <laughs> okay. Don't you be mean, you horrible man, you. <laughs> we are still waiting here, guys. This is taking absolutely ages. I do apologize. Hopefully, an admin can actually give these guys a kick up the ass because that's what they really need right now. There's no need to be waiting this long. If you are out in the front or if you are at home, get a cup of tea while we wait because it's going to be a little while. Get a cup of tea, maybe some bickies. You know, I, I miss tea and biscuits. Germany, not so good on the tea and biscuits. Definitely not. They, they don't even have real tea bags. No PG tips out here. I have to go to the English shop to get bacon, tea. They, they don't do real bacon in Germany either than the English shop. That, that frustrates it's me. It's not bacon. It's, it's like a ham. Yeah, you get it's, that. it's not. And you know what annoys me more in hotels when you go and get breakfast? And they serve you English breakfast. It's not English breakfast. It's horrible, like scrambled egg and you know, like thin know what bacon. It is. It's oh, like this is not English wrong. breakfast. What are you doing? You butchers. Yeah, but well, if they're butchers, it'd probably be a little bit better, to be fair. But anyway, all breakfast aside, <laughs> hopefully we get an update from an admin. I can see Wargaming staff walking into the production area, just ignoring me, like guys, I don't want to look at us. She might actually make me do some work. Can we find out what is going on with these games, please, producer? Because we do not want to be keeping you guys waiting around for no apparent reason, because that is ridiculous. And uh, as I just said earlier, 
They are just setting up as we speak, but make sure you go get your tea and your biscuits now because these guys are taking forever and a day, and I'm not even going to lie about it. It's all their own fault. So, um, Ollie, do, do give us a little bit of a, a history lesson to these two. Where have they come from and why have they made it here? Because I obviously only just joined into World Tanks on Season 2, but you've been around these guys for quite some time. So, Evil Pass Squad are pretty much the oldest team in this tournament. I mean, these guys were literally day one team. I mean, Evil, uh, Go For One, which I actually played in, they, those guys were there. They were pretty much there with the same team. You know, Ace on your screens right now, he was playing. Sony was playing. Zenith was playing. A couple of their players have switched around. Butcher was in their team originally, who is now in Mouse Sports, who have gone uh, home early uh, yesterday. So they're really old. They've been playing since they won the most successful Go For team in the history of World of Tanks. Uh, before Navi, before uh, Versus Pro, before Team Tignitas, before Mouse Sports, before any of those guys. It is Evil Panel Squad who take the biscuit. Casa Crew, a slightly um, you know, younger team since 2012. Those guys were formed. They've been having consistent results in those Go For Cups every Sunday. Um, and they've had consistent results through, throughout wargaming tournaments like Easy 8 and, uh, you know, Mangle Metal, Super 6, etc, etc. Um, offline tournaments always done extremely badly, coming last place, not winning a single game. But that's more down to the way that they're a little bit inexperienced and a little bit scared. This guy on your screens right now, Rune's perhaps responsible for the reason why they're doing uh, so much better this time around in the pre-playoffs um, and then coming here to the playoffs where they're now fighting Evil Panda Squad. In terms of experience, Evil Panda Squad definitely have it, but Kaz and the crew they have that young blood and they have the ability just to perform some absolutely incredible tactics if given the opportunity. So guys, uh, if, we, if we don't have an update in the next minute, we will go to a commercial break because we don't want to keep you waiting just staring at these guys while they're not actually getting ready to go. There's no point keeping you around unless they're actually getting ready. Um, so guys, we're going to go quickly to commercial. As soon as they are ready, we will be back with the best World of Tanks action going on in the entirety of the world today. So make sure you stay tuned. But go get your cup of tea, go get your biscuits, get your little snacks on the go, get ready. We'll be back in just a moment.
So guys, welcome back. We are still waiting on Kazna Crew to actually join the lobby. Evil Panda Squad have actually managed to start a game. It's quite impressive after two years of playing, they've managed to make a lobby, but we're still waiting on Kazna Crew. They're struggling, bless them. They didn't you know, finish too highly up the rankings this season, so we can't expect too much from the guys. It's very hard work, but uh, they are slowly but surely trickling into the lobby. Maybe Steven can go out there and kick the teams onto the actual lobby. That would be nice. Steven, stop talking to people and get the teams Steven on the server. Steven doesn't do any work. This That's is what a you very should good learn point. about, Steven. That's a very good point. I might throw something at him. If you haven't met Steven, he casted season one. You'll probably remember that. It may not be a good thing, but you might remember it. I've wiped it from my memory. Most people tried to. Yeah. Sometimes bad things just kind of stick around. <laughs> um, while we wait, because these guys are not doing anything, they are slowly but surely joining up. I, I do assure you they are kind of getting there. It's... It's not quick and it's not pretty, but they're working out to click an invite button and a join button. It's sometimes I get very confused having to click a mouse at least two times. Um, I, I don't even know, you know. I mean, sticky keys don't help because you, know, uh, you click it like five times and it goes out onto sticky keys. I mean, come on. Uh, there could be sticky key issues. Yeah. That could and you've got mouse problem. acceleration can uh, come into they the could miss. They could miss the button. That yeah. could be the problem there. They could be missing the button. Um, they actually have managed to get some of their team onto the lobby so maybe they can decide to actually start it soon that'd be pleasant so we're looking at the team who did manage to work out where our lobby is and how to join it so congratulations to those guys evil pandas the more kind of uh, talented bunch i'd say i'm going to back them now just because they actually were able to create a server and join it it's not hard i kid you not whereas kasna crew still a little bit confused there I'm not sure if it's the look of confusion on their face. It's the concentration on their face trying to join a lobby. It's, it's like incredible. It is a lot of hard work. It's like 110%. They can play the game. I mean, they can do some of the most incredible 700 meter shots across the map. But joining a lobby, Oof. Jesus. It's pushing it, guys. But uh, hopefully they have mustered enough strength to kind of... Look, look he's trying to look, look, lean forward to the guys in front of him to actually work out how to join the lobby. He's like, <laughs> oh. Did he click that? He clicked it right. My turn. Hold on. No, I'm just kidding, guys. We are actually almost underway now. So hopefully you've had your chance to get your uh, snacks and your drinks in and actually, um, you know, get ready for this one because this is the game that most people have wanted. It's two of the community teams who everyone enjoys watching play together. And when they do turn up, they give you the best show. Evil Panda Squad almost provided the biggest upset yesterday, kicking things off with an incredible game on this very map as well, on Himmelsdorf of everything. Just annihilating everyone, going super aggressive, almost Spale style. So these guys certainly can turn up when they have to, whereas Kazna Crew, well, I, d I don't love them anymore. They've lost my love after being unable to join a lobby, but I assure you they're still a very talented team. Proving their worth and getting themselves to this point is impressive within its own right. So hopefully we can put you onto the tank picking screens because, well, they might actually decide to start picking tanks soon. They might indeed start taking tanks soon. Let's just uh, let them know that's what they should be doing. Uh, so we can get into this one very quickly. Interesting to see what these two teams bring out here, if they're going to try anything new, as this is crunch time for these two. They've got to start putting out all the stops. This is where their special tactics will start coming into the equation. This is where we'll see some real proper interesting stuff. So everything all this season is built up to this point. You know, 22 match days these guys have had. 22. Imagine that. Yep. Best of five. Three games at least. So that's 30 minutes each times 22. That's pretty incredible. That's a lot of time all just to build up to this you know potentially five map round very true the amount of games these guys have played the amount of world of tanks these guys have played in this league is incredible they have played these situations out time and time again they've worked through every possible outcome they've made sure they work out every sort of situation that could go wrong and they've focused it up so guys who did stick around while these guys worked out to join a lobby I love you. I love you lots. I'll buy you a beer later. Maybe not all of you, but like two. <laughs> I'll buy two beers later. Whoever wins this can buy everyone a beer. Because they'll, I, I they'll have enough agree. money. I think Kazna Crew kind of need to anyway. I think it's down to them for not turning up. They need to buy everyone in the audience who stuck around a beer. I think it's only fair. I don't know if you agree. So, I think everything is pretty much ready to go now. Um, we are still looking at the main man himself on your screens right now. That is new multi-show, the standout player really for Evil Panda Squad, who always seems to do so well in the big games, doing ridiculous damage. If you ever wanted to learn how to play this game, you've just got to be watching him. He is an absolute monster when he gets focused up. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. So we are going to get under the way with getting tank picks. So guys, get ready. Let's get into the screen so we can see exactly what they're going for now, because the T1 picks are coming out, the IS-3s are there, and so, take us through what we're seeing so far, Oli. So, standard picks so far on Himmelsdorf T1 AMX5100 coming out from both teams. T1 IS3 coming out from both teams. So, that 
Russian tank and the uh, French tank coming out straight away from both. They're not, you know, they're not giving away anything too early on. Those early picks are always going to be your standard picks. Uh, the uh, French tank just there to provide the firepower, the, the IS-3 there to provide the alpha damage and to try and take some of that damage itself. So MX-5100 IS-3 will, is the last pick from the side of Evil Panda Squad. And we're just waiting for Kazna Crew to take this one. So last time these guys played, um, I believe, it was actually Kazna Crew who took it. Oh, no, actually yeah. I think it was Evil Panda Squad who took it. Um, you talking about at this event? No, yeah, or this, the it, offline yes, event? No, yesterday. Uh, it was Kazna Crew who took it. Was it Kazna Crew? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was one of the two, I think. <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> one, one of the two, two one. Yeah. But online, every time they faced off against each other, it's all always been, Kazna. Always been yeah. the Kazna Crew show. You can go back as far as you like. These guys have always pipped them to the post. And even when they were interviewing Sony before, they said, we want revenge now. We want to turn it around. We yeah. want to take this the other way. And just as we go away from the tank picks, they've actually picked up a T-32 here. The yeah. Kazna crew. Why do you think they've gone for that? I've seen it a couple of times here on the Himmelsdorf. But what do you think its use is going to be? And who do you think from this lineup on your screen is going to be playing that? So they actually picked it yesterday, I believe. Uh, they played it from the north, and uh, well, it was quite a strange pick from the north, certainly, because in the south, I think it works a slightly a little bit better, especially along that banana road. Um, yeah. But it's just got a lot of uh, tire armor, 298 millimeters. It's gun, the T5E1, is extremely good, mm. 320 average damage there. Uh, it can pump out pretty quickly as well, you know, like a 10 True. second reload. Penetration is not that good, 2 244. That could be a problem, especially against the IS3s. Um, but apart from that, we got the T69s and the MX5100 for both teams, so. Uh, the side of Kazanaku is it's got the double, the AMX 5100, the, the IS3, the T69, T32. So good stuff from them. And uh, Evil Panda Squad going for the double AMX 5100, the T69, and the double IS3. So something a little bit more uh, standard, you could say, um, from that side. So Evil Panda Squad going for the reliable lineup. Will uh, Kazanaku sw switching up a little bit with the, uh, with the T32, the uh, American tank. So see if that one works out. Yeah, and we, we, we discussed who this map favored. But we've got to find out really how they're going to play it. Because every time I see an Evil Panda Squad, they've kind of done a bit of a cheesy strategy so far at this yeah. event. Um, the first map being the one that sticks to mind, they literally rushed through the center of the map. And I believe they caught Mouse Sports off guard in that one. And it's, it's very kind of hard to predict how they're actually doing overall because they've always been pulling out these crazy strategies. So it's not the easiest thing to kind of go, oh, well, they're good on city maps, so they should win this. It's not that simple at the moment because every team's kind of turning up with something different right now. You'd never expect Evil Panda Squad to pull off a Spale tactic, ever. Like, those guys were never that team. They might have done something a little bit quirky, don't get me wrong, but it was never a rush through mid. Kazna Crew, on the other hand, I would expect that from every now and then. They kind of calmed it down towards the end of the season, but they had games where they kind of went, nah, let's, let's just do something insane. And they just did it. They, they every now and then pull off something like that, but it was actually Evil Panda Squad who did it, and I was a little bit baffled. So in this one, I don't know what to expect. What sort of pacing do you think we're going to get from this? From this, do you think we have a fast-paced game? Or are they going to play it slow and cautiously? Usually on offline events and the group stages, it's pretty slow and cautious. But here we kind of see the game speed up a little bit. Yep. Um, but I don't know. I think Evil Panda Squad are never really a team that's gone particularly fast on Himmelsdorf. Uh, they don't. They're not a fast and furious team. They're all about timing, as uh, Ace said in the uh, previous interview. So I think it's going to be a slow game for the first two or three minutes, perhaps four. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see how that one works out. But both teams are now ready. We're just waiting for uh, one of the Russian casters, I believe, to uh, join in this game. Um, if he doesn't join in soon, we'll just uh, have to go on without him, unfortunately. So uh, just seeing how this one goes as we just get these two teams ready to roll into the first match will be Himmelsdorf. After that, we'll be seeing Abby, Steps, Ruhrmerg, and uh, Mainz, and then en Ensk and Prokhorovka being banned. So we won't be seeing those two. Uh, the Russians. I got actually someone tweeted me saying that Ensk is a Russian, um, a Russian map. Yeah. It's got a massive statue of Stalin right in the middle of it, which I, which I forgot to mention, forgot to see. Even though I've driven past it probably like at least 6,000 times. Hmm. I believe they are actually getting ready to do the countdown. Uh, they are going to hold off because someone is just logging in as we speak. So it literally will be seconds away now, guys. The wait is over. We are almost ready to get underway in this one. It's been a nice little wait, hasn't it? Um, we will be almost ready, so do not fear. We will be getting underway as soon as this last caster can, he can join up. I know it's hard. Everyone's kind of having this real issue with being able to join servers these days. I don't know what's wrong with people, really. But anyway, guys, do get ready. Do get prepared. Hopefully, you've got your tea ready and your biscuits next to you. Get the little things going because, guys, we are about to go into the first map here in Himmelsdorf.
So welcome to the first map. It will be the one and only Himmelsdorf. We will be seeing Evil Panda Squad starting the blue towards the south. Whereas in the north in that golden yellow, it will be Kazna Crew, the community favourites, who've been a little bit hit and miss so far, but they always are a talented bunch when it really comes down to it. So, bit of an interesting start, I've got to say it already, for Evil Panda Squad. So, uh, do you want to kind of explain what they're doing here? Well, they're doing exactly what you said they might probably not do, which is push straight up some line and see what happens. They're pushing straight through the Banana Road, filtering off to the left with the Zenith, Poto Mac and Ace, a new multi-show, and one more right behind them. It's going to point to play, and that one is going to be playing right from behind. He's going to use the T69 to try and flank from uh, the side. Nalem's there in his T1 to catch him out if he can, uh, but it's, it's quite interesting to see that they're not at all waiting for Kasana Crew to get the advantage, not waiting for them to get into a better position. They're going to push straight in. Hyber's already taken about 500 damage in that uh, T69, so he's got to be careful. Dark Dawn playing the T32, the resident heavy tank player for Kasana Crew is going to be trying to do some hull down shots. He's going to be very, very crucial to the side of Kasana Crew, but look at this. Pointer and Zenith now pushing forward with the AMX 51. Remember, he has got the six shell autoloader, although Pointer just did ditch, take a damage, a damaging shot there. But I think Zenith and Pointer are going to push around onto Hyber, and the Ace and Potomac are going to push around onto Dark Dawn. Well, Dark Dawn already has rece received a shell down to 1193. Not looking too pretty now. Zenith and Pointer chomping out of the bit. Wanted to get around there and challenge Hyber that phenomenal T69 player. He is one of my favorites when he is in that tank, but with these two hungry and waiting to go, it's not going to be an easy task here. They are literally waiting for one pixel to be in that perfect position to take a shell on towards Hyber. Just retracting back, but he knows he can't go too far as Polo Mako and EJS will start advancing towards Dark Dawn. Pointer moves back. New multi show now looking towards Dark Dawn, who is surrounded by the evil Panda Squad, who are going to make their move as we speak. EPS comes around and Dark Dawn is receiving massive amounts of damage. There's so little he can do, but finally Veko st steps in, gets good shell connection onto EJS. Dark Dawn 371. He is the main focus right now. Nine HP left on him. EJS cannot fall. He needs to get this kill onto Dark Dawn, or he's played safely. Polo Mako playing the defensive role. Xena fighting Hyper. The T69 King goes down. Xena falls up onto Veko, but finally falls to the hand of Runes, as now Runes is really the target for Polo Mako pushing forward. The clock is ticking against them, but they can still make time. 706 is left onto runes is being focused down as we speak seven hp has just been removed again 242 he's gonna back away again absolutely annihilated at the moment 58 seconds on the cap there is no way that's gonna go uncontested and surely polomaco is gonna get that one he does do indeed and now it slows down leaving really only still mojo alive who can do any sort of work against new multi-show Polomako and Eclipse. This is not a good situation for Still Mojo. Oh, look at Still Mojo doing a brilliant hit shot onto the side of uh, Evil Panda Squad, but that was a, a kind of a, a very risky situation for EP, Evil Panda Squad there. They didn't execute it perfectly, but look, Still Mojo is going to push straight into New Multi Show. He's going to come around the corner. His New Multi Show actually reloading that MX 51. It's got a 50 second reload, which is absolutely donkey years, especially when this game is decided in a matter of seconds, possibly. But where is the uh, infamous Potomaco playing that IS3. Is he there to try and deal with something? Palauda and Eclipse are having a one-on-one. -on -one. Palauda's definitely not in the advent advantageous situation. It's 11 seconds reload on that T1, that Spaz 20 milli millimeter Hispano. And there we go, Potomaco finally taking out the Eclipse. No, Eclipse finally getting taken out as well if he doesn't be careful. But still, Mojo, he's going to try and find his way onto the back of New Multi Show. Yeah, New Multi Show already caught him a couple of times there, so worked him down to a better little chunk of HP. But here comes Pono Mako waiting to receive. They set the trap, and it might just pay off. It has 5 4 7 left on Still Mojo. He tries to reply. No such luck. It slams into the building around him. Still Mojo now trying to back away. He's in trouble. Here comes Evil Panda Squad. They are looking hungry for this one. 99 HP left. And it looks like the Evil Panda Squad will get this one in the bag already. New Multi Show getting the final kill there. And this means everything to these guys. Great start for Evil Panda Squad. That is the start they needed to go forward against Kazan Crew. And they said they wanted revenge, and they've just got the first taste of it. 2.7k damage done by Poto Maka in the IS3. Absolutely fantastic job by him. Really, really wanted to see him step up as a player. I think he's had some questionable performance performances throughout the group stages to 22 match days and also at offline events before so I think uh, really enjoying to see him really enjoying seeing him you know improve as a player really builds up his skill level um, but that wasn't a perfect execution for Evil Panda Squad that no. was really bad like they 
pushed all rounds on everyone around onto the T32, but it took absolutely ages for that T32 to go down. It took it, it took ridiculously long. Like the Iron Street's bouncing, not doing any damage. The MX-51 is struggling with that as well. Uh, and then you know the, the minimum damage of the 362 shell, I believe, uh, aced it in the IS-3 when 390 is the average, and that's all he needed, the average, to take him down. So really unlucky for an evil pound squad, but still managed to claw it back. Kazan crew just not doing anything. They literally looked like rabbits, you know, stuck in headlights. They didn't do anything to evil pound squad. They could have flanked around. They could have come come through the one-two line. They could have come through their cap, but they just couldn't stay there. And you know, you saw the result. They just completely left the game. And uh, they might as well just exited from that point <laughs> onwards. So looking at Abbey, which will be the next map, I'm not sure who this one really favours. Um, they have already started the tank picking, so hopefully we can uh, get into that nice and quickly. But uh, what do you think this map kind of entails for these two? Who's going to come out on top here? That's a, that's a pretty good question. Is uh, Well, these two teams, not uh, not my favourites on Abbey for sure. I don't not not like a I, massive I fan of how they play so on this. Yeah. Sometimes Kazna Crew does have a great style to it, but I don't feel they're strong on it. It's like yeah. they can play well in small sections. So you know, two, three tanks together always do quite nicely, but they don't have an overall kind of picture on here. Yeah, it's like Hybe's good at the, the yeah. Abbey area, but that's like... That's not, one out Yeah, that's like one aspect out of like a million to control. So. I'm not a massive fan of these two and Abby. I think it's going to be a tie game just for that reason. Maybe they'll just decide, okay, we're not we're not going to screw with the rest of the map. We're just going to leave that part. We're just going to go over to the mountain side. We're going to have a proper old uh, slugging fest, and then whoever wins that will uh, take the map. And it is one nil to Evil Panda Squad, so they are one nil up again. Uh, last time they actually went two nil down against Kazan Crew. So so far so good for that team. Definitely got the momentum. Definitely got the confidence. You can see that. But as uh, we jump into tank picking here, as um, Kazakru going first, T1, AMX 30, 90, um, and a, uh, that being repeated by the side of Evil Pan has got T1, AMX 30, 90. Um, and uh, Kazakru also going for the T69, so probably something towards the middle if uh, we're lucky, as does Evil Panda Squad going for that T1 and T69. Uh, really loving that American tank. So, standard stuff so far. Although Kazakru just took an AMX 5100, which is a standard pick, especially from the south, but it's it's a little bit of a strange pick in my opinion because it's it, it can work really well or it can just go disastrously wrong, especially if you can't get it in the right position. Uh, T69 and AMX 1390 will be the latest one at Evil Panda Squad. Last pick from Kazakru is the AMX 1390. Last pick from Evil Panda Squad is the T69. Hmm. Interesting selections indeed. Uh, I want to see who's playing what for Kazna Crew as well because either can play that 1390 so well and the T69 on this map and the adaption between them is uh, it's always it's always curious to see how they want to go about it. So I'm looking towards him and the way he starts this map off because he's always the linchpin for me on this map. Uh, around that middle section he's always so good there. He always seems to be the one to turn up and always be the one to kind of make the opening kills or get the opening attention and somehow survive. So a lot of teams, some, sometimes they get a little bit crumbly around mm. that, like they get a little bit worried and you know, they don't uh, really control it. They'll show their hand and then kind of get you know, damaged or they won't get out of there cleanly, whereas Hype always seems to do that very well. So guys, do get ready for the second map. It's going to have to be Kazan's crew trying to call this one back into their favour and it will be Abby. So welcome to the second map, folks. It will be Abby, as we said. Artos is his favorite map in the world. He adores this one and uh, wishes it was back in the Korean leagues. But in the North spawn, it will be Evil Panda Squad facing off against the Golden Yellow Kazna Crew in the South. And are we seeing the typical start from these guys here? It's a pretty typical start. Evil Panda Squad uh, going towards the mountain area, as is Kazna Crew made prediction so far is right, that they're just going to go for a full-on slugging fest and uh, hope that they can come out on top. But Evil, pa Evil Pan Squad definitely at a disadvantage here, guys, because they don't have that 5100, which Kazna Crew does. 5100 can wipe out an AMX 3090 and miss two shells doing so. So it's, it's so easy to do, and especially with that HP advantage. Pointer and Hive are getting spotted out straight away. So
So now Evil Planet Squad will have a good idea and Kazma Crew will have an equally good idea where the other team is. Although, you know, it could be, you know, it could be thinking, okay, they've got one tank there, but we've got all the other tanks around the other side. So there could be some bluff, there could be some double bluffs, as so often is the case. We've got some complaints of lags. So maybe... Yeah. Yeah, people are just randomly driving into stuff here. Yeah. So I think we might be restarting this game as everyone's just randomly drove in, driven into walls and stuff. Um, yeah, so we're going to pop back to the garage on this one. Yeah, we, do, we don't want to... Uh, um, these guys aren't completely prepared if everything isn't you know, working perfectly for them, especially at this point. We, we don't want them to obviously be playing under that sort of situation. It's all about the perfect place to be playing these games. So we're just going to wait for this one to be sorted out here. Um, yeah, it, it was strange because the Evil Panda Squad seemed absolutely fine uh, on my screen. I was like, oh. Yeah, Evil Panda Squad seemed all right, but Kaz and crew were just randomly driving into like a wall and, you know, reversing into stuff. I'm not sure. Do I need to press this? Apparently, Runes, Ru God Runes, their new player, had 500 ping. Ah. So. Hmm. So I, I think we're all good, so we're just going to jump straight back in um, once the uh, last tank has left the battle here. Who is that last tank? I think it's not me. Might be you. No, it's not you either. We're going to find out who that is. Um, hopefully we don't have to restart the mod. I've got a horrible feeling we might have to, but we're just going to roll with it by now. Um, but we are just going to wait to see if these guys can get on their way nice and quickly. Obviously, we can't expect them to just jump into the game if they're not prepared for it or if they're not ready. If the game's not, or if they're, obviously if they're lagging, that's, that's not exactly ideal, is it? So I'm just going to have to wait for this one to calm down a bit. And they'll be jumping right back into it. But uh, from that start, do you think they're going to adapt now? They've seen what the opposing side kind of was up to, to meet. Or did they really get any spots going out there? There was one spot for each team. One was a T69 and one was an AMX 3090. So uh, not really that much information. Not enough to really make a, an informed decision upon. Um, without taking huge risk and that could just maybe prompt the other team to do something a little bit differently but I don't think so I think we are going to see an identical start from both these two teams mm. ah, runes crashed okay so this might take a little bit longer guys uh, so we'll try and get an update as to how long this might take to sort out we obviously don't want to keep you um, hanging on the telephone as such so yeah, they're just going to wait for him to be able to sort that out because he has to exit the basket first and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, looking at the way they started that off, whose strategies do you think feel worked best there? Well, you know, in that situation, I would have thought Kaz and crew would have come out on top because of that extra uh, bit of fire the MX-5200 provides and also the uh, HP pool it has. Uh, but it could have gone either way and I wouldn't have thought uh, Evil Panic Squad would make the same mistake they did against Kaz and crew yesterday, which was uh, pushing... Trying to go across the bottom side and then thinking, nah, screw this, we're going to go across the top side. Uh, then just getting themselves completely obliterated. So uh, I don't think they're going to be re repeating the same mistakes. They're not really a team to do that for sure. So um, we're just going to have to wait and see, really, see what they can come up, if they can come with anything special. I was hoping that they would go across the middle a little bit more with the T69s, try and get some sni side sniping shots, maybe use the T1s to do the 50-meter proxy. Um, but, you know, these teams not wanting to mess about, not wanting to give anything away uh, and not wanting to, you know, do something which could possibly mean that they're losing for no real reason. Mm. Server 4. We are just uh, trying to find out what's going on um, towards... <clears throat> okay, so there might be a bit of a network issue, so do bear with us, guys. We are just going to have to wait for this one to be resolved. Uh, Runes is out, but that observer isn't. Uh, it's, it's more of a game issue at the moment, because someone's still stuck in the game as an observer. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to quit that soon and get it sorted out, but... It's going to slow the momentum down. I feel that Evil Panda Squad have kind of reset what they built up already. And that's really not going to help them. They're a team that does so well when they have that confidence beside them. But as soon as that's removed, it's going to be pretty... Uh, 
pretty hard work for them to build back up, really. I, I don't feel as though they're a team that can just muster momentum out of nowhere. As much as team spirit may be a huge thing amongst them, it's not the best thing in the world to just depend completely on it and then, well, when it comes down to the wine, not be able to step up. That's the issue for me is that can they re-kind of kindle what they had on that first map and make have on the second? Go for those crazy tactics where it somehow actually worked. Um, maybe client. So we're still trying to find out what's going on there. It's just uh, hopefully resolved now. I do believe that it got sorted out. We are almost ready to get back into it in this one. If I just, just double check and I press the right buttons. Because sometimes I press the wrong buttons and I break things. So when I kind of do that weird question that sounds like I'm talking to you guys at home, I'm actually talking to Oliver, who normally tells me which buttons I should press. I could probably be in Kazna Crew with my button pressing skills. You need some, uh, some Freudian conditioning, I think it's called. You know, when you give someone like a something nice, like a fruit, so they carry on like doing it. Like a banana. Yeah, so they carry on doing it. So that's what you need to do, just like put something nice on the screen so every time you know what button to click. I guess this is, this is things we're thinking of for season three to make it even better than it already is. It's like training animals. Is that what you're saying? It's like casting with me. Uh, I think animals is a kind word. Wow. A single cell organism, amoeba, maybe. Surprised you know such big words, Oliver. Yeah, you have maybe a mitochondria. Oh, look at you go. Did you make the word up? <laughs> I went to school. That's surprising in the West Country. I thought you just <laughs> married relatives. Anyway, we are getting ready to go back into Abbey in just a moment. Do not fear. They, uh, I don't think they'll be resetting here. Um, yeah, there will be no, no, no map video. You don't need that. You've already seen it once. We are just going to look at the gorgeous faces of Eagle Panda Squad. They look really cheerful. Um, happiness throughout. Um, I don't think he's ever smiled since he lost his chewing gum. He looks literally like someone's killed his puppy. Who? No, come on, it's Ace, man. Yeah, but Is look, if he doesn't have his gum in, he looks really upset in life. I don't know. Looks so sad. So Evil Panthers are all ready to go. We are now once again waiting on Kazna Crew to find their ready buttons, or at least type they are ready. And we'll be back into the action on Abby in just a moment. And I'll sit here and just wait for it to happen. Oh, they, they have managed to find it, and they are going to be getting ready. Um... Yeah. So I hope we are getting underway now as they do count themselves in and it is time for action. You can see on their screens they are just loading in as we speak. Hopefully there will be no further issues because technical problems make me a sad panda, not an evil panda, nor am I in a squad. But we will be seeing once again evil panda squad starting in the north of Abbey or is in the south in the golden yellow will be Kasna crew. And look at that lovely camera work. Woo! Spectacular. Woo! I'm all excited. Good luck, have fun, have been said. My sarcasm will be put aside because we are going to go back into the action. We are almost underway, as you see, and as you can see on the screen, the battle will start in five seconds. And we're all eyes on these guys, see if there's any adaption coming out. Are they going for the same thing? Will Evil Panda Squad head over towards that right side of the map towards them? Down that one and two area, I believe they are sending Zenef, Sony, and Eclipse towards the more central area, towards the actual Abbey. Rose Kazna crew, are they going for the same similar thing here? Yeah, Kazna crew is going to push over as they did previously up that mountain area. They didn't get spotted too much, so they're going to be pretty happy with their situation. They know they've got the Amex 5100 there to provide the firepower. Evil Panda Squad, again, doing the same thing, pushing over to the mountain area. Happy to go there as well. Although I think they're definitely at disadvantage, especially considering they actually ended up losing this one against uh, Kazna crew last time. Zenith has gone towards the middle, which is good to see. They're almost, I think they're listening to me, to be honest. That's exactly what I said to do. Eclipse is going to go in proxy spot, or at least going to stay in that position. So even if it's going to do the middle shots over if Kazakru does decide to push, or they try to decide to take the bait and go across the middle uh, where the bushes are, and they can easily get shot through there. So uh, thanks, guys. We've got to let Ollie think he knows what he's saying every now and then, folks. It's, <clears throat> it's only a kind thing to do. So first spots have been made. It's Roos to receive the first shot. Excuse my awful camera work there. Pointed now, advancing a touch. He knows he's not going to be alone, or at least he should. Hyber has shown his face a touch, and now we're in that kind of Mexican standoff here, down that two line, where these guys just have to play out smartly. Last time this went down, it wasn't so good for Evil Panda Squad. They got a little bit restless. They pushed into the choke points, and they got punished. This time, they might have a little bit more discipline. But Hyber, once again, facing off against the likes of Pointer and EJS, trying to keep their attention drawn. Yeah, that's all it's about, getting distraction and then pushing in once you've distracted and that's something we see so often something Kazakru's been pioneering for the last few games uh, very very good for them at the moment 
Everything is even. 862 on runes. 1125 on new multi show. Obviously, the T69 has 250 HP more than the uh, AMX 1390, so it can take one more shot. It's one of the advantages of that brawler of a tank. So, points are being spotted out by Hyber once again. The view ranges of these guys is insane. They have all nine crew skills, 100%. That these tanks are absolutely pimped out to the max. So they have absolutely everything. So everything is completely fair and even. Uh, it does kind of make them also superhumans in some respects. Although, you know, crew skills don't make such a difference. Uh, you'll be surprised that they don't make it. Once you have, you know, brothers in arms and, and the kind of sixth sense, then it, it's, it's really marginal. But look at this. Kazakru starting to edge forwards still. Mojo's going to be there in the front. He's going to go past Narlem, who's going to take it up the rear. And Narlem is going to try and get some sniping shots off into point at a new multi show. No damage done so far, just bounces. Yeah, bouncing off the rear. Not a good way forward, but there we go. Finally connected one onto Narlem. Further fire comes in towards Kazakru. Pointer laying it down. No great work. Oh, Rune takes an absolute pounding. 379 left towards him. Hyper now kicks into action. Kazna crew are flooding towards Evil Panda Squad. Can they hold them at bay? The Horde are absolutely coming now. Flying down that two line, looking to apply further pressure. Pointer backing off, EJS backing off. They need some backup and here comes New Mold Show, the superstar player for Evil Panda Squad. Can he get that fire down in that T69? He's looking to do it, he's got the eyes trained on it. Oh, he actually misses it and receives the shell, 904. Action now, folks, towards Pointer, Narlem and still Mojo have pushed around. 259 damage dealt, Narlem going low, but it's the players going down. It's Pointer out there, EJS is now the next target for Kazna Crew. Surely he's gone down and he has. Oh my word, this could work, but here comes New Mold Show finally stepping up, finally turning up, picking up two. Polo Mako all the way around the back finds Narlem and they could just about mop this one up but my god is it close still Mojo still in a bit of a battle with Zenef now focus fire going down Zenef gets some good damage and he sets him on fire that is exactly what he wanted to see right there 84 HP he is out of there now still Mojo and uh, the rest of the boys are in a little bit of trouble because, well, the Mold Show looks pretty darn hungry. Veko, next target, 200 damage dealt. He cannot get away from this man. If he is on form, if he is wanting blood, he will get it. Veko desperately running away, running to walls with everything he had. He's trying to escape the hand and the grip of new multi show. Zenef and Podomako splitting off, though. Both looking on the hunt now. You can see them looking in towards Veko, who's now been spotted. He is in trouble. He's getting hammered left, right, and center. 189F, and he goes down to Zenef. Evil Panda Squad looking damn good in this one, with only tier ones remaining for Gazna Crew. These guys look ready for this game. They wanted revenge. They certainly get it, and they are getting it in some style right now. Paluda, the last man standing for Gazna Crew, will get one shot down by New Multi Show, who picked up three that round. And wow. What a way to get that in the bag. Absolutely fantastic battles by Evil Panda Squad. Uh, that was just a poor execution by Kazakru, but Evil Panda Squad stuck it in there, even though uh, Kazakru was doing some very good focus fire on their part. I really loved how they pushed the MX-5100 in there. Still, Mojo really managed to get the MX-5100 in a good position, but then Potomako came up from behind. He managed to get all his sh four shells into the back. That finished off quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, tanks for Kazna Crew, and that was the real problem for their team. New Multi Show could have done a better job on that T69 on the high ground, but you know, Runes, he was on full HP, he went forwards and he was on 360 HP. That was the difference between that. And I think that was the biggest problem. Runes went too low at the beginning. Uh, they couldn't use their MX-5100 uh, as well as they wanted to, although it did was the best part of their team then. Um, perhaps if they used two MX-5100s or like an IS-3 or a T32 even, which we haven't seen for a very long time in that situation, it would have worked. But one Abbey apiece now for these two teams. But Kaza Crew 2-0 down against Evil Panda Squad. And, you know, they're in last chance saloon right here. Yeah, this is it. We are going to have to try and make these guys step up to the plate because Kazna Crew, well, they, they've barely shown up at the moment. This is very, very odd. These guys were so on point yesterday. These were the guys who performed so, so well. And now, where the hell have they gone? That's what I said, you know. Um, they're a team that could just not turn up today. They've done so badly in, in other offline events. and They've done so badly in some online events as well, but specifically offline ones. And that could have been a problem here. You know, they could, yesterday turned up perfectly, plenty of motivation, didn't turn up, no motivation, and you found themselves in just a very, very bad situation where the evil panel squad's consistency and the fact that they don't beat themselves on a regular basis, uh, is just coming into fruition and it's just really helping their team in general. 
you are coming out with some brilliant sexual innuendos today. Like, they've been like row after row. But anyway, the third map, the final possible map, if uh, the Evil Palace would actually do manage to get this one, could be Steps. So, who do you think is more favourable on Steps here? Because it's, it's a bit of a different uh, beast, pretty much, to the last two maps we've seen. Is this one where we might start seeing, you know, a bit of a comeback from Kazna Crew, or is this going to be another case of them getting a little bit overzealous, not quite showing up, and Evil Pan Squad just being a little bit more dominant? I think we'll see a comeback here from Kazna Crew. It's, it steps is their map for sure. Prokhorovka steps, I think they're pretty damn good at, but specifically steps. So I think this could be the one they could come back from. This could be the one they can really start pushing uh, their boundaries on, and they have to do it here. They have to do it. If they don't, they're going straight back down with Dinova to the uh, small finals playing for third place, which is no mean feat. Well, it's certainly not what they came here first, came here for. They wanted to be first. They wanted to take the crown, the 50,000 euros, and obviously uh, the title of the World Tanks Pro League season two finalists uh, and final winners. But we can uh, jump straight into tank picking as two teams have got uh, that underway. T1 AMX 90 from both teams coming out first. And that will be uh, replied with from both teams by a T1 and a T69. So two AMX 90s, two T1s, uh, and two T69s and two T1s from uh, either side. Just waiting on, this, on Evil Panda Squad to pick next. I'm expecting double AMX 90 or th something thereabouts. Um, unlikely to be a double T69. Is that, that will bring him up to three T69s. It will be an AMX 90 and a T69. Expecting the same thing from Kazan Crew. Well, we're going to have to wait and see. Maybe they're going to go for that fast French tank as opposed to the T69 extra. Um, we did see Team WD, otherwise known as Huns Underdogs previously. They were the pioneers of the five AMX 90 lineup we saw doing so well in the uh, first few match days, especially against Mouseports where they won um, quite spectacularly. So AMX 90 T69 will also come out from Kazna Crew. And uh, now waiting for Evil Panda Squad. They will be taking an AMX 90 as their last pick. And I do believe that will be the same from Kazakuri, indeed it will be. So triple AMX 90, double T69, double T1. That, 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 like, that phrase is literally engraved on my mind now. I say it so often. So mirrored lineup from both teams, going to be about the skill, going to be about the coordination. Yeah, indeed. And I've enjoyed Steps recently. There's been some real strange kind of work coming out on it. Um, I think Denova are the team I want to look towards. But these guys, you know, I don't feel as though they're going to throw this one away. They know the exact the gravity of the situation. Now, this could be going home time for the uh, Kazna Crew boys if they don't manage to step up to the marker right now. So you guys do get ready. We are about to go into the one and only steps. Welcome into the third game, guys. We are about to see Evil Panda Squad try and get a 3-0 victory against Kazna Crew. Will this be another yellow moment where we see them flying down that five line? I hope not. I really do pray that we see something normal. But have a look overall. What are we seeing from these two here? So Kazna Crew not wasting any time going over towards perhaps the disadvantageous side from the south, which is the trench. I prefer going over towards the uh, left side, but whatever floats your boat. Uh, Pilaud is going to go forwards, and I'm going to get behind the rock straight away to try and get some proxy spots onto the uh, Sony. But that is way too late. Point to taking him out, and the Potomaco taking him out. So that could be very bad news for Kazakuri straight off the bat. He was, look at that, he's way towards the right. He should be towards the left, so he can't get sniped down. So just poor T1 play there. That could cost them the game, and that could cost them the 50,000 euros. But Evil Panda Squad sitting back, just waiting, making a couple of shells. Still Mojo taking one there. He's down to 1-1. One, one, Zero, one, 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 zero. Even but runes. Look at him. He's he's peeking around. That could be bad news for a new multi show if he doesn't be careful. But both teams quite happy just to have a little bit of a duel here. But I think Evil Panda Squad have the better position, and that's why you can see now Kazan Crew still Mojo Plowed are pushing backwards. But that's going to be leaving Hyper and runes on their own. You can see Point a new multi show is going to push in and Potomaco behind. Yeah, these guys are now pushing all the way down. This is 
Highly interesting play from them. This is confident play from them. Hyper having to retract back. Pointer is moving up with New Mojo using the Deflate and the de Gun Depression. He's trying to look over and get some shells connected, and they are still. Mojo is being hammered right now. Down to 385, making 116 into the hands of New Mojo. We go and already taking the lead. Here comes the counterplay from Kazna, forcing their way around. Paluda, the first target, down to 1071. This could be the undoing of Kazna crew. They are being focused down so heavily. EGS finally receives a shell from Vecco, I do believe. But New Mojo already work his way around. Zenef being focused out. They've actually cut them away a fair bit. Zenef takes down runes, focuses for another, can't get it, but Paluda will find him in return. So now here comes the rest of Eagle Panzerwood having to find their way towards Veko. Shot to pieces already. 580 and well, it's not looking good. 339. He's been stopped in his tracks. Paluda and Hyber trying to get away. But here comes Pointer, here comes Protomako. And there goes the players. GG's already being said. Paluda and Hyber are both still alive, but the tracks have come out, and Paluda is stuck exactly where he stands. 310 HP. This is the undoing of Kazna crew, guys. They are being dismantled as we speak. Pointer just ramming for the sheer fact of it. And now he will be able to get that final killing blow, surely, as Hyber is still sitting pretty, but with the likes of new Molcho hot on your trail, you do not want to be standing in that situation. So Hyber, the last man really standing, apart from Dark Dawn, who's only in that T1. This is the end for Kazna crew, who now have to battle their way through, even worse, falling at the hands of Pointer there. And wow, what a game to be seen. Evil Panda Squad won in revenge. They have just have it. They have just turned up and showed exactly what they are made of. Well played to these guys. There is only one T1 left, obviously, in the game. That's why they're not getting up just yet. They still need to kill the uh, one remaining Tier 1 player who's just hiding around. It is uh, Dark Dawn. But, guys, what a way to end this one off. They just annihilated Kazna Crew, the team who were normally the one. Well, no, every single time they were the one to beat them. These guys have finally stepped up and been able to handle them. And uh, what a moment for it. Now they deserve it. Good friendship between these teams, nevertheless. Handshakes everywhere. See Nile in there shaking hands with Sony. They're, they're good friends no matter what. But this has got to be disappointing for Kazna crew in my eyes. After the first day they had, they did so well. And now, where have they gone? They, that's the first 3-0 I think I've seen, really. Yeah, it's the first 3-0 of these last two days. Uh, extremely disappointment for the uh, Kazna crew guys after such a fantastic start to the uh, tournament. Absolutely is obliterating the competition. Oh, and that's uh, great to see. On the first day, and then, you know, coming back here. But you can <laughs> see Evil Panda Squad so happy. Congratulations to the Polish Giants. <laughs> Definitely a deserved win for such an experienced team. And the cameraman getting obliterated. A cameraman. Why would you stand in the middle of seven they've Polish no, guys jumping up and down? It's a scary place to be, but they did manage to capture a whole cameraman there. But they <laughs> uh, do deserve the victory indeed. They played so well then. Hand in hand, absolutely phenomenally. In maps, they necessarily shouldn't have won. They once again turned up again and did the damage. But well played to Kazan Crew, nevertheless, they tried. Sadly, they were a bit of a shadow of their former selves in the last day we saw them on. But, ne you know, this right now is the evil Panda Squad that could go on to make some real upsets here. Real, real upsets. That was a real bit fantastic play. They knew they were on reload. They knew they could push in once they had the reload. And they just finished the game off. CNF and Ace went down. No problem at all. And that's the real kind of thinking you need from a team that could go all the way here. And Virtus Pro looking slightly more shaky than a very confident evil Panda Squad. And that's going to go in their favor. And Virtus Pro have been beaten consistently by this Polish team. Uh, throughout every single, well, throughout most go fours in the best of three. So that could come in here as well. Virtus Pro now sitting down, ready to try and come up with a good strategy to counter the uh, mighty evil panel squad. Congratulations to them. They will be our finals finalists at least. So I can't wait to see I, what's going to happen. I'm so proud to see yeah. them actually make it there. They're a team that kind of had up and down performances. But guys, I've got to pass over the stage to kind of once again just speak to the guys out there because they've just made their way through to the finals right now. These guys have done what most teams couldn't. They're going to be facing up against the Giants in only moments away. So let's find out exactly how they're feeling after that great win. Yes, thank you guys. I'm here, of course, with Sony yet again. What a huge game. Only three games this time. It wasn't stretched out so much. It really seemed like you guys were so patient, so collected. You let Kazuna, you know, except for that first, well, you know, the first map was, you know, very aggressive, but in the last two, you were in the driver's seat. You dictated the flow of the game, and you sat back and you waited for, for Kazan to come to you almost. How do you get yourself, how does a team get themselves into that position where they decide how fast or how slow the game goes? 
was uh, it was great game of our spotting of our team play we play really aggressive on this map we spot our opponent we know what they will do and it was the key to our success and we play the most important match and we show that we can play and we play our best games in the most important match yesterday it wasn't the most important match today was the most important match with Kazna. So now we've got an even more important match coming up for you guys a little bit later on. The Virtus Pro Juggernaut you guys will be taking on in that grand final. Um, one word to describe how your team is feeling about that game. Yeah, one more question. Oh, yeah. yeah, just um, describe how you guys are feeling about that game with one word. Virtus Pro? Yeah. Virtus Pro is um, a really difficult opponent. They have a lot of experience. I remember our last match on, on the offline event in uh, Moscow yeah, one year ago and uh, we lost these games 3-1 uh, but we have now completely another squad and we want to take revenge on Virtus Pro and win this year games come. Oh, thank you Sony for three. Round of applause for Evil Panda Squad ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. The bottom seed for this tournament, they went 11 and 11 in the regular season. And now we'll be challenging the top seed, Virtus Pro, with 20 and 2 in the grand final. What an incredible turn of events. But we're going to head to a commercial break and we'll be back with you guys very shortly. Stay tuned.